Welcome to whiskey.com, where fine spirits meet. My name is Lüning, Horst Lüning, and I'm the master taster of whiskey.com. And today we have another Glengoyne finish bottle here on my cask. It's a 1996 Chateau Lanert finish. I had some Glengoyne already here, the video. And uh, there's a video of my visit at the Glengoyne distillery. Have a look at that. It's a wonderful picturesque distillery. Yeah, very close to the lowlands, but it still resides in the highlands. There is a artificial tax line, former tax line today. There's no differences in taxes uh, left uh, from Greenock to Perth or Dundee. I don't know exactly. And Glengoyne happens to be a few miles north of this line. Uh, in 2003, Glengoyne was uh, bought by the independent bottler Ian McLeod and he wants to yeah, become a whiskey, an integrated whiskey company which bottles independent but also owns distilleries and so they bought I think in 2010 or 11, probably 12, the Chemdu distillery as well. Um, and a few years after they bought it uh, they started to finish uh, old casks from Glengoyne, here in this case the 1996, um, in special casks. And here they finished in a Lanert. What's Lanert? Lanert is a chateau, a French wine chateau, uh, in the region of southern Rhone. Uh, I drove by, I never, I did not visit the Chateau I drove by in 2010, I think. It's a big estate, really impressive. And there's money in this Chateau. It looks wonderful. Um, so, um, Lanert is uh, famous for its barrique matured white wines. So this is a finishing in white wine barrels and it was filled into the cask at 52.5% ABV and we have to say, see uh, if I have to dilute this whiskey a little bit to drop below the magic line of 50% ABV which is my personal limit. Yeah, this bottle is from our distributor. Uh, he had a tasting with us and a little bit less is left in the bottle. I tasted it in 2010 and then I forgot this bottle in the cellar, in a dark cool cellar and now I found it and I said well have a look at it and as I said by the Madeira finish before uh, the content may have changed a little bit so one uh, fraction of the people of the connoisseur say yeah there is an oxidization going on and you have to finish this bottle six months after opening otherwise it's completely messed up others say no you have time a lot of time two years four years don't worry be happy um so this one is uh 11 years old it was filled into the bottle in 2007 then we opened it in 2010, uh, removed it, and there, then a fresh air went into this bottle with uh, fresh oxygen in it, and then oxidation takes place until the oxygen is gone. Then, if you heat it up and cool it down, heat it up, cool it down, we'll press a little bit uh, out of this gap between the cork and the glass uh, and tear it again. In uh, when the liquid becomes cooler, so uh, it has a a change, a hefty change in density. If you have this water alcohol mixture uh, heating and cooling, uh, if you have a bottle with 46% ABV uh, and you have it at room temperature and it's filled like this, and you uh, put it out into cool winter and freezing temperatures, then the level falls down here. So it's quite a, a lot of contraction going on. But my cellar was cool and constant temperature uh, so that might not happen too much. <clears throat> 
smelling at the cork is really important at every bottle if you're open freshly uh, because there are some yeah, bad substances generated by bacteria which taste awfully. TCA is the name. Uh, and when a bottle stands for a long time, there might be bacteria working in the cork and producing this TCA, tree, chlor, and whatever. Um, so I had to smell at the cork to find out if the cork went bad or not. Sweet, fruit, citron. Perhaps pineapples. A distant smell of pineapple. Vanilla. Citrus grass. A little buttery, oily. Yeah, and it's not that strong. It's the last one for today, so 52.5 might be okay, and it might have evaporated another <laughs> percentage point of alcohol. So I tried neat. Hmm. Still strong, still hefty. Fruit, fresh fruit, estuary. A little oakiness from the back, only very little. So the finishing brought mostly fruit into this whiskey. Red currant, a little sour. I think this strength is perfect for this whiskey because the fruitiness is so, so intense in your mouth. Oh, mouth watering and fruitiness and sweetness and then some sourness from the back. It's, it's really complex and it's flipping left and right and back and forth. Oh, wonderful whiskey. I'm afraid I haven't seen a Chateau Lanert finish uh, at Glengoyne in the last years. I've seen quite a few uh, finishing bottles. Uh, most what I've seen was the 10 year old, the 15, the 12 year old cast strength, the 18 year and they started to have a 21 year old and a 25 year old so they expanded the normal range quite substantially uh, in contrast to the uh, farm appropriator. Uh, they made a few experiments uh, with these finishing and I've heard of bottles available at the distillery. I think there are also uh, finishing uh, finished casks uh, available at the distillery itself. When I visited it, I've seen some special bottlings there. Thank you for watching whiskey.com. There's more to come. Stay tuned. Feel free to share this video with your friends and discuss with me this bottle on YouTube or on our forum. Thank you. Thank you.